Um, so raise your hand. Tell me if this is your first conference ever. Yes, see, I heard from a source that there was quite a few of you out there, and there's like, I think I counted six. Um, how many is this your first Angular conference? Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's like over half of you go. That's amazing. That Well, I'm so, so glad that you chose this one to be your, I, I guess, your first, your first Angular conference. Uh, my name is Alyssa Nichol. Um, I'm a web developer from Orlando, Florida, and I have a toothless dog named Gummy who assists me in my programming at home. I work remotely for a company in North Carolina, and um, I also have some courses on Code School and Egghead. Um, I like to be on the Twitters. I have an open DM, so follow me, don't follow me, just send me messages on there and I will get back to you. So yes, it is just my name, it's kind of simple. So let me know if you have questions afterwards, if we don't have time to ask them during the session. So my talk, Animations in an Angular World. I am so, so super excited to share some new things with you guys, some old things. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the first time that I heard we were adding animations to Angular. Um, I'm personally like a front-end girl. Uh, to me, doing something in CSS is a thousand times easier than opening up a JavaScript file any day of the week. And so when I heard they were adding that, I was like, but why though? Why, why would we not do it just in our, our beautiful CSS files? So I was, I was very confused. Um, and so then that led me to the questioning of well, what type of animations should be done in CSS, right? Like what, what should be done in Angular? What should be done in CSS? Where do we draw the line? Um, how many of you are familiar with animating in CSS? Like read about it, you don't even have to have done it, just like you're familiar. Awesome, that's wonderful. That is really, that's a lot more than I expected. Most of the time, <laughs> for some reason, a lot of Angular devs are like, no, I don't do CSS. And I'm like, oh, you don't? And they're like, no, no, I don't. And I'm like, okay, well, that's awesome. <laughs> you keep, you do you. <laughs> so I have five anchors. You like that? Get it? Because we're on a boat. <laughs> five anchors, I know, I know. It's okay, you can laugh, it's silly. So I have five anchors for my talk. Um, and I was sticky noting them out on my desk whenever I first got the talk accepted. And I was like, okay, what do I want to cover, right? And wild sticky notes flying. And essentially, it came down to these five things. I want to cover the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that, that's what, right? What animations. Uh, the question and the need. Why do we need animations? The example, how. The steps, also how. And our takeaway. Who? Boom. Oh, I love it. I love that animation, the keynote one that goes, like, I don't, that, that was my best humanized form of that, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, have you guys ever seen a bad animation on a website? Yeah. One? I got her yes? Okay, like two of you. I like see them all the time now, so. <laughs> um, there's three of us here today. I'm going to take us over to a website and um, walk you through this. Uh, this is just, this was a, an Angular app that was built during a hack night. And so I totally get that it was like literally during, I think, a 24, 48 hour period during Angular attack. Um, so, and I love everything that they tried to do. They tried to make surveys fun. However, I thought that there were a couple things um, that went, aw that went awry, and I want to show you that. So we're going to be uh, Billy Bob today. OK, so we did a scaled down animation. Um, Billy Bob is a female. Uh, and which of these are you good at? JavaScript. So I don't know if you guys <laughs> noticed that, um, but the animations are actually randomized during this survey. And so in order for me to get back to showing you that one, I'd have to refresh. Um, but essentially, there's a bunch of fun ones, but then there's some other ones that are, I don't know, I, the first time I took this survey, I guess because it's random, um, I got a bunch of the flip ones in a row. And <laughs> there was a point when I was like, waiting on the flip to finish just so I could go to the next one. And it was really frustrating because I was, I was trying to get through a bunch of apps so that I could judge them. And I couldn't even finish this simple like 10 question survey. I was just like, why? Why though? So I see what they were trying to do. Um, and 
I don't think that the answer is to avoid animations. I don't think the answer is even to say, we'll never flip anything, right? It's kind of like the marquee. I recently learned about the marquee tag, right? No, like, oh, no like, and, um, we were driving down the highway and my husband told me about it and I was like, wait, like it still exists? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, so can we use it? And he was like, well, you can, but does that mean you should, right? Like, and, and there's a lot of things in life that, not just in web development, in life that come back to that, right? Just because you can use it doesn't mean you should use it. And I really think that because there are so many ways to go horribly wrong with animations, I think that a lot of people just don't. I think that they just, they abstain from animating. And I think that's a shame, really. I think if we put a little bit of thought and effort um, into animating, it could turn super easily uh, to the good. Has anybody heard of Neon Mob? I'm really curious. Nobody? No? No? Oh my gosh, yay! I get to introduce you to one of my like nerd sites. Ne <laughs> I know, it's super nerdy. Neon Mob is, um, whenever I was thinking about, thank you, who did this right? Um, who does animations right? It was just like a dead center, Neon Mob does this right. It is a card collecting site. Um, some people call it a game. I don't really know if card collecting can be a game, but I, I digress. So I'm going to show you how they do it right, but first I want to read you something from Hard Boiled Web Design by Andy Clark. Anybody? Yeah? We got Shorty. He's over here like clapping. Um, has anybody else heard of it? Hard Boiled Web Design? No? Okay, so I will, I will make sure and put it in my resources link and get you guys the slides afterwards. But literally, it's just, it's an absolutely ridiculously wonderful book. Um, but there's this paragraph that I really need to share. So, don't kid yourself, sweet cheeks. This isn't the way to evolve our craft or build a better web. This kind of old-fashioned thinking holds us back. It forces us to make excuses for not doing what we know is the right thing. The worst that we, as the custodians of the web, can do is to allow anything to limit what's possible. I love that. On days that I'm feeling super lazy, I go back to that, right? Like, when I know I should do something the right way, or I know I should, okay, actually think through this user interface, add something on to make it just a little bit better, right? I love it so much. So, oh, we're moving. We're leaving Coco Bay, or Coco K? K, Key. So this is Neon Mob, and this is my collection. And daily, you can go on here and open new packs of cards. And you get freebies, or you can purchase cards, and it's a cool way for artists to show off their new work and become, hopefully, popular. Um, so you open a pack, and you click on a card, and it flips it over. You guys see that? And so, I want to go, oh, I'm on a daily streak of one. Yay. I'm going to show you it one more time. So I'm going to open a pack, the jelly bean animals, and it flips over, right? It's not super slow. If anything, um, I think it was about half this, like, not half, it's probably a third less long than the other flip um, on the survey, right? And this is just, what I'm saying to you is never, ever, 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 ever say, I'm just never going to use that thing, right? I will find a good use for Marquee, all right? I don't know what it is yet. I just kind of learned about it. But I feel like put in the appropriate context, it could add to the user experience instead of someone going, all right, rotate, right? So I think, let's go back into our slides. Um, I think that as long as you can go and ask yourself, is this enhancing the experience? Or am I making them wait? That's a really uh, just a simple, basic question for animations. And I also heard it said, I think it was Rachel Neighbors. She, and she said it's with animating, as with like animating um, for cartoons or other things, but also animating for the web, in all animating, you take how long you think the animation should be, and you split it in half. And then you split it in half again, right? Like it should literally be divided by f like four, right? So make it snappy, but don't just throw it out the window. Um, why? The question, the need. So identifying needs of users that animations answer. Can anybody here tell me a reason to use an animation? I mean, other than the fact that like it looks cool, right? Like whenever the card flips over. 
Is there an actual need or a use case that you can think of? Oh, yes. Showing that something's loading. Showing that something's loading. Yeah, the spinner, the loader. Drawing attention to some part of the user interface. Drawing attention to some part of the user interface. Yes. Anything else? User feedback, yeah. Yes, oh my goodness. I owe you a drink, sir, because you just walked right into my next like, thing I want to talk about. Um, to, to convey like, feedback or where you're coming from. So there's, have any of you, can you get me my other book? I know, I'm like literally the worst person ever. I forgot both of my books. So I have this duck book. Have, do any of you know what I'm talking about? It's an O'Reilly book. It has a duck on the front, and I call it my duck book. And me and my, my friends from college, we <laughs> have the duck book. It's, um, it's an O'Reilly book, so obviously animals, uh, and it's called Designing Interfaces. And so if you haven't ever seen this one, it's definitely worth a read, um, or at least having on your shelf of like cool like animations and CSS books, right? So, um, but the duck book, it talks about uh, user patterns, and it's not like you know, beautiful patterns of like strawberries on a field of cream. It's not that kind of pattern. It's, it's more of, um, Things like habituation or spatial memory, right? Spatial memory is what Ben Lesh was pointing us towards. Um, I came from here, I'm going to here. So if you think of clicking on a hamburger and the dashboard or a menu comes in from the right, where do you expect it to animate from when, you, when it leaves, right? Like it should probably go back where it came from, really. <laughs> it shouldn't go like bouncing down the other side of the page. And it's just, um, forming these habits for users that use your websites or your web apps so that they can like form this spatial memory of like, oh, this is over here and this is always over here. And it's also building up a story of where it's coming from and where it's going, right? So as long as you're consistent with these things, animations can be used to great aid of the users. And you guys listed a ton of other things that weren't even a part of that one single user pattern. Ba -doop. Oh, yes. So this is my uh, walk into NG Doc. I know Tracy talked about it a little bit. I don't know, have any of you guys used it yet? Looked at it, yeah? Oh, yay. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Joey's asked me to be a part of it. Um, it was before NG Conf this year. And um, at NG Conf, I gave a talk called Giving Bootstrap the Boot. And so, oh, we're moving. Ooh, I don't know if you guys heard, but I was voted the most <laughs> likely to get seasick during a talk, and that was not a joke. They were like all dead on, and I didn't tell any of them about my motion sickness issue. So none of you seem to be in the splash zone, so you're fine. <laughs> you're good. Ooh, all right, so yes, I gave a talk about giving Bootstrap the boot. And so Joe was on the organizing team, and he was like, hey, I have an app. It's using Bootstrap. Could you give it the boot? And I was like, yeah. And so he, I joined it, and we announced it at ngconf and it's basically the unofficial angular docs and so any any resource that you have whether it's a code sample or a gist or a blog post or an article or a song that you wrote about angular tracy <laughs> any resource that you have you can link on here and uh, we have cool ways to filter with like tags or versions so that you're like no i just want angular version four of animations don't show me that other two garbage right so that you can filter through Pretty simple idea, but I'm in love with it right now. Um, so I decided to grab that. Yeah, we're gonna stay in the notes for now. I'm gonna take you over to it in a minute. Um, so yeah, I decided to grab that and go ahead and add some animations and to demo it. So I'm gonna start off by animating purely in CSS. You guys see the lights flicker? I'm not losing it, right? It's happening, okay, all right. <laughs> Like, if I'm up here and the lights are going dim, I'm just going to sit down, right? Like, and I'm the only one that's seeing it. That's not a good sign, you guys. If the lights ever start going dim and it's just you, sit down, right? Like, just get down low. All right. Home component. So, yes, I want to show you animating purely in CSS because that's what I do. As a CSS girl, again, like I was saying, I was like, why would we need Angular for this? So, inside of our home component, we have an article wrapper, and it's wrapping each one of, let me go back to this. So it's wrapping each one of these, I love it, it's hilarious. It's wrapping each one of these articles. And so our article wrapper is just this chunk, this chunk, this chunk. So I'm grabbing my class of article wrapper, bloop, 
that one there. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a CSS transform to it. You guys know it? Use it? Anybody? No? <gasps> yes. Oh, yes, yes. I love it. So I want to go over a couple of terms. You can feel free to glaze over at this point if it doesn't interest you. So transform um, has a couple of different values that it can do, like translate, which will move an element like so. Skew, which has anybody ever actually found a good use for skew? There's got to be a Todd Moto. Have you? You no? No. Okay. If Todd Moto hasn't, then there isn't one. You have? Oh, so like you just like barely nudge it. He's talking about. Uh, sorry, you, not everyone here. He said um, when you're making like a three D image of a book, you might use skew to build that. That's a really good idea. I need to write that down. OK. <laughs> so rotate would rotate an element, and scale increases the size. So inside of our doo -doo -doo home component .scss, don't be afraid. It's just CSS with an extra S added to the front, right? It's fine. Just don't even worry about it. So we're going to do a keyframe, and we're going to call it fade in. That could have been named Billy Bob's fade in. Doesn't matter. So keyframes, fade in. And usually a keyframe will have a from and a to, but I just want to go from the state, like the, the blank state, and I want to go to this state. So I want to give it an opacity of 1, which means I can see it, because it's going to go from 0 to 1, or the range's opacity can be. And then I'm going to transform translate it y of 0 pixels. That basically means I want it to be exactly where it is. Kind of sounds confusing, but let me show you what I put on the article wrapper itself. So on the article wrapper, these are just its base styles that I had. And then I went ahead and I added opacity of 0, bloop, and I gave it a transform translate y of negative 50. So basically, I'm saying, hey, article wrapper, I want you to become invisible and move up 50 pixels. All right, you all with me? Feels good? We're like that. OK, as long as you have that baseline, we can move forward. Do, do, do. So now is the fun part. Oh, yeah, the fun. You guys ready for the fun part? I want your game faces for this, OK? All right. So in SAS, SCSS, we're going to go ahead and do a for loop. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it if you didn't know that. All right. So we're going to say for i, and we're going to loop through i through 10. I made a delay variable, and I said, hey, you're going to be 100 milliseconds times i calling out my article wrapper, nth child of i. And then I'm going to say, hey, give it an animation with 150 seconds, milliseconds, excuse me, long, an ease in timing function, pass in that delay variable we just created, and forwards and fade in. So basically, the sum of this is I'm faking a stagger, right? So the point is that I'm saying, OK, the first, let's go back to our, I want to go to the one that has all of the goodness on it. Bloop, bloop. So basically, I'm saying, OK, i is our variable, and I want to times it by this one. So it's going to be like 1 times 1 is 1, and then the 1 times 2 is 2. So it's going to incrementally get a longer delay, right? I'm basically faking a stagger. However, the not so hotness of this part Doo -ba -doo, is the faking part. It's the, I'm putting a hard-coded 10. I'm basically assuming nobody's screen is going to be taller than 10 articles, right? Because like, after 10, they're just going to come in. They're not, they're not going to fake. Um, and then, of course, the bottom half. If i equals 10, I want to do the same thing, but instead of timesing, I'm going to plus 1 on i. We can go into this more afterwards. My husband is an Ember fan, but he's also a CSS god. So if you guys want to like get together and like hash it out with CSS afterwards, I would love to get into that. But I wanted to show you that you can do something in CSS. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> so this is what it looks like um, whenever we do that. And I do have it live, um, live locally in my browser, so we can show you that as well. But uh, this was my one fallback, <laughs> is the video of that happening. But it's kind of jank, right? Like, 
I don't know. Can you guys think of a screen that's taller than 10 articles? Maybe like a what? Oh, OK. All right. There you go. A Thunderbolt display. Are those massive or something? They are massive. They are massive. OK. So I don't know if you guys know this, but in Matthias's talk, he talked about some really cool things coming out in Angular. And those of us who um, are CSS lovers were sitting on the edge of our seats like, is it out yet? Can we use it yet? Is it out yet? And so I heard last week, um, it, it has been merged into master, but it's not out into production. So if you want to use the things that we are about to talk about, you need to point to this exact version, 4.2.0, not RC0. I need everyone to say it with me. Not RC0. You guys can do it better. Not RC0. Yes, RC1. It won't work in zero. All right. So has anybody heard about query? Ooh, I got one. Seriously? One of you? Oh, and that guy, too. Oh, those three. You guys don't count. Stop. <laughs> so I'm kidding. You're just, ugh. all right. So query is used, it's a new feature that Matthias made. And it's used to find one or more inner elements within the element that you're talking to. And you're basically going to animate them. Um, I didn't want to get too technical with that definition. And I think I hit my mark, because that, that sounded really bad. <laughs> um, I don't want to go too far into, and I don't think we honestly have time, for talking about all of animations in Angular 2, like what, what animations had to offer at that version. Um, pretty sure this course is free. John Linquist teaches it on Egghead, and it's like 15 minutes total. So like, if you ever wanted to go through and be like, OK, really, how, like, what are all these things at a basic level? And he'll show you an example. Um, there is the link. Let's go do that. So we're just going to jump right into the new stuff. Oh, these are the things that he'll t cover. So we're kind of walking into a baseline of, you know what, animate, transition, trigger, state, keyframes, delay, and ease. We're going into it assuming you know what these are. If you don't, you can just follow along because you can go back and redo that, that little bit later. So you like my shark? He's totally stolen from the internet. My goal was to like replace out all the assets with like hand-drawn ones. Sharky here didn't make it. So you guys have to deal with this little PNG guy, but he'll do. So these are these steps. I want to break down animations in Angular 4 so they're a little bit less intimidating. I don't know if like sometimes whenever new things come out, not just in Angular, but I'm like following along with the person who is announcing them on stage. And I'm like, crap, what was step two, right? Like, and I'm like scrubbing backwards. And then I'm like, literally, I always make this list, right? So I always wish that they had it because um, I, I don't know, I can't follow it without. So basically, number one, we're going to import. Well, actually, you know, here they are. Now let's, oh, <laughs> sorry. I forgot I took out that slide. Um, that's my ending. So we're going to go into the code now. But basically, we're, let me walk through this. We're going to import browser animation module into our app.ts file. We're going to import animation, trigger, all the cool new things that we want to use, like query and stagger, into our component. We're going to call trigger, add a nice transition. We're going to use query to grab out those elements, and then add stagger, because in, remember in our CSS that we just did, they were coming in at delay. They were staggered. So we want to go ahead and make that happen, but in Angular this time. Boop, boop, doo. Awesome. OK. So we're going to go over to the codes. And this is a mean stack, mean stack app. And behind the scenes in the terminal right now, I have npm run server going and npm start. And we're just at localhost 4200. Just, you know, like, is anyone lost? OK, cool. Everyone's on the basic yeah, mean stack. Cool. So we're in the home component that I was talking about. And we're going to go ahead, uh, maybe make it bigger, maybe. Bigger? You guys can see it? Yeah? OK. So inside of our component, we're going to, below the template URL and the style URLs, we're going to add in our animations. We're going to call trigger. And this fade article in, again, again this can be anything, right? So um, I think in one of my files, I named it like our very own custom animation, because I always like to test things out by like naming them ridiculous things and then seeing if it breaks. Oh, I'm sorry. I have do not disturb on. What is up with that computer? I don't 
I think it's because Chrome doesn't listen to that for some reason. Anyways, I digress. Fade article in, so that can be named anything. And inside of that, we're going to give it a transition from asterisk to init. So woo, basically, asterisk is any state. So a lot of the like, example apps that I've seen um, will be like, hey, go from any state to any state. And they'll even do this, where they'll add in the back. Oh, this is like super tiny. Let's make it bigger. Yeah, there we go. So they'll add in the back tick. And so basically, we're saying, I want you to apply it when you go from anything to anything and then back again. It doesn't reverse the animation. It just makes it apply when, like, so let's say we go from the home state to the about state. Well, when we go from the about state to the home state, I want you to use that same animation. And that's what that blip guy does. So in ours, we don't want to do that. We want to go from asterisk to init. And we're going to query our article wrapper. And we're going to give it, I'm sorry, guys. I really don't know how to control it. It's just going to happen. We're going to have to deal with it. Like, I have ADHD. Don't know if you guys knew that. I'm usually medicated. <laughs> um, caffeine helps a lot for people who have attention disorders. But I feel like all of us in web share that. Like, I'm not kidding. I have not met a developer yet that doesn't just like do a squirrel moment, right? Like, we all have it. So we're just going to have to deal with the notifications. OK. So we're going to query for the article wrapper. And we're going to give it a style of, I really want this to be on one line. OK. A style of transform, translate, negative 50 pixels, opacity 0. Is this looking familiar? It's the same styles. It's the exact same terms, right? OK, given, yes, our translate y has to be in a string. I'm upset about it, too, all right? Because you know, in CSS, you don't have to put a string around that. But transform, translate y, negative 50, and opacity of 0, same exact styles. We're going to query for our article. So this is basically like our baseline. We're going to do it again, get that article wrapper. But this time, we're going to use the new stagger feature. And we're going to say, I want to stagger by 100 milliseconds. And then I'm going to animate it with 100 fill it 150 milliseconds. So it's like, OK, I'm going to come in at 150 milliseconds. But each one is going to be staggered by 100. And it goes beyond 10, which is really exciting for people who have, what did you call it? A bolt thingy? It was like the big screen. Yeah. Thunderbolt, thank you. <laughs> yes, so, which is exciting for Thunderbolt. Um, arg. So yes, 150 milliseconds, and then our timing function. Uh, how many of you guys know what timing functions are? Yes, yes, OK. Sorry, I thought the camera guy, was, I thought you were raising your hand. And I was like, even the camera guy knows what timing functions. This is the best day ever. OK, sorry, no. So <laughs> um, these are all basically keywords that point to cubic Bezier timing functions that are super groovy and fun to play with. If you haven't ever nerded out on a Saturday afternoon doing that, you should. Um, but yes, yeah, so we'll give it a timing function of ease in, because hey, it's simple. And then a style of asterisk, um, which is basically like our base styles. Like, look back to what our base styles were. At this point, have any of you ever heard of host binding? Anybody? Oh my goodness, yay! Host binding is the coolest thing ever. Like, ever, ever, ever. Well, OK, maybe like not ever. Unicorns were probably number one, and then host binding. So at host binding is going to allow us to go ahead and add our at fade article in to the host element without ever opening up our template, right? Or ever going to an element and adding it to it and then changing our tags based on relative to that. So basically, this is going to be added to the outermost host bud of our home component. We need to create this animate page variable. But instead of saying, because honestly, we could say init right here, bloop. And it would basically call this guy, well, at first I had it in this. Which, if you think through the logic, I had it happening on ng init. Sorry, I'm like erroring all over the place. I was saying this.animate page equals init. And I was doing it inside of our ng on init. But whenever you're going through ng doc and you're looking through the articles and you go over and you change the tags or you filter, 
the, the articles are going to reload in, right? Like they're going to change. And I don't just want my animation to happen on an it, right? So that's why this following logic happens. Inside of our start loading function, we're going to set it to this.animate to a blank string. And inside of our stop loading, we're going to set it to init. At this point, if I haven't broken anything horribly wrong, we should see our articles load in. Woohoo! Oh, good. And <laughs> Thanks. And that's with no, no, uh, no CSS like we did before. And it will go below 10. It'll go all the way down. And now at this point, if we do say, hey, I want to filter by that, it's going to go ahead and redo the animation, right? So yes, we did it. We did it. We survived. What are we doing on time, Zach? We're out? We are out. All right, let me do my last slide then, and I will walk away. I never looked over there for my time signals, so that's on me, coach. That's on me. All right, so our last and final anchor, um, the takeaway, what I hope you get from this. <laughs> so we're doing animations. Yes, because they're fun. Maybe, maybe because we have to, because it's on a ticket, right? Like, and that we have to just check off. But really, at the end of the day, um, at least for me, and I really, really hope for you, that we do animations and we do what we do to make people's lives better, right? So our takeaway basically is to, when something's annoying or it's too hard, um, in web development, not just Angular or styling, but in web development, just try to go back to your anchor point of why do you do this? And who are you doing this for? And hopefully that'll make it like a little bit easier for you to get through. But yeah, thank you all. I don't have time for questions, but we can do it after. You can find me. But yeah, that is all. Thank you. Yeah.